give us our opinions. I suppose what I would say first of all is uh, you're well aware of the fact, but uh, the sector, the beef sector, is in such a crisis, and uh, that coming from a rural area that concerns me a lot because in counties like uh, Roscommon and Galway, and, you know, agriculture is still the backbone of our communities. And uh, so many families and so many communities, you know, uh, rely on the um, on the farming community. And I'm sure uh, you've often heard it said that when farming is going well, the towns and villages are going well because they do tend to spend the money that they make. Um, just following up on previous speakers, I mean, there is what I would call within the farming sector a level of. Um, you know, um, of disbelief in, in the future of their industry. And I think that calls for, you know, radical action and a radical plan. And in most cases, you can see that the, you know, um, cattle prices are down at least 100 euro this time last year. And considering all the costs that farmers have to deal with, um, it's, it's, it's just not sustainable. And the, the, the beginning of this movement, that the Beef Plan Group, which is, you know, making significant progress in attracting uh, thousands of members to it, I think clearly shows, it, show, it shows two things. It shows, number one, that the sector is in a massive crisis. But it also shows that people who have been involved in farming um, over a long period of time, they don't want to let go. They want to continue at it. They want to continue to, to make a success of it. But certainly what I'm hearing is, you know, a level of despondency, which uh, concerns me quite a lot. And I, I, I attend quite a number of meetings. Um, the China market is good. Look, we must welcome any efforts made by the department and made by the minister and his staff and made by Board Bia uh, to get new markets. But I think, and you might make a comment to this when you're responding, um, my understanding of the, uh, the, the beef market in China, that it won't be significant on the basis the Chinese people don't like frozen beef. They like fresh beef. And while certainly there will be a certain market for some of that frozen beef, it's not going to be huge. But nevertheless, it's welcome. Uh, the biggest thing, I suppose, with farmers, too, is, you know, the, the control of the beef industry and you know this, this, I suppose it's like it's like that this it's like that there's a superpower there controlling uh, farmers and controlling the prices and again in recent times we've seen the takeover of the CD plant in in in, in Edgerstown in Longford and again a byproduct uh, from farming is used there uh, in the CD plant and the firm who's taken that over are a major player in that business right throughout uh, the British Islands and Europe. And it again, it seems like we're just down to almost one person controlling the business. And that is very frustrating for farmers. And there's one thing that struck me in recent years is I often count maybe a lack of respect for the farmer's point of view sometimes from the factories. They, they, they tend to openly dismiss farmers when they have an issue about price or the future of the business, and they don't engage. Now, anywhere you have a problem or a crisis in any sector of your economy, you have to engage. But sometimes it looks as like that the, that the farmers are slapped down by, by, by the business, by big business, say, look, you'll take what we'll give you, and that's it. And there never seems to be any... And to be honest, there are poor relations between the factories and the farmers in this country. And I blame the factories for that because at times... I would have to say that their, their approach is arrogant towards the farming community, and very arrogant. So that's something that needs to be worked on. And the, the level of engagement doesn't happen, in my view, with the, with, with the factories. Um, if you just look at the bull prices at the moment, and you compare the bull prices in Ireland to the prices German farmers are getting, Italian farmers are getting, Spanish farmers are getting, French farmers are getting, way above what Irish farmers are getting. And those sort of prices that Irish farmers are getting is not sustainable. And that is why we need increased funding, in my view, from, for the suckler cow. Because if, the, and I don't have to repeat this to you, if the suckler cow people go, 
our business, our beef business will collapse. And finally, the whole challenge, and, and, and as Senator Mulherrin has mentioned, the whole challenge of climate change and, that, and, and what's happening there is another massive challenge for the farming community, which has to be, you know, we, ha we have to take it on board, we have to deal with it. But again, it is something that will have to be uh, worked on and worked on, on, very, on, on very quickly. And again, it's, it's, it is of concern to, to farmers. So basically, the point I'm making here is that this sector, unless it gets huge intervention from the department, is going to be in crisis. And if it continues in crisis, uh, more people are going to leave this industry. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, Deputy Murphy. And finally, Deputy Healy.